But first, let's drop down into our bodies, bring awareness to the breath. You can close your eyes or have a soft gaze. Allow your breath to fill you up and support you from the inside out. So begin to breathe fully into the physical perimeters of your being. Right? Our breath is our internal support system. That way our muscles do not need to grip or work over time. Especially in challenging postures, it's important to bring in a sense of support, to invite in a sense of easefulness to carry into our efforts. The one, one of the things I really love about handstand is the ability and the opportunity to turn things upside down to explore a new vantage point, a new perspective. So if you like, reflect on an area of your life, not only on the mat, but also off the mat in which you can benefit or would like to invite in a new perspective, exploring a different vantage point. At the same time, bringing in a sense of curiosity and playfulness Begin to soften your face. Right? Make sure you're not bracing in your face or anywhere else in your body in anticipation for what's to come. And you can slowly open your eyes. Let's warm up our necks. A couple of head circles. You could drop the chin about four times around each direction, allowing the space in between your ears to soften, relaxing your jaw and your face. And after your fourth round in the second direction, chin center, and then interlace your fingers, press your palms forward and round through the spine, a couple cycles of breath, breathe into the back of your body. And as you bring it to center, bring your palms together, bring the heels, the hands to your heart, elbows to the side, and then open up through the chest. So this will be our cat house. And as you exhale, go in for the dive, reaching and extending, rounding through the spine, even bringing the pelvis back. And then open up through the chest, open up through the shoulders. You could gaze slightly upward. Do that two more times. Rhythm of your own breath. We're using the breath and movement. Get some circulation going. And let's meet. In a cow-like posture, so open up through the chest. Let's do eagle arms. Really important to prep the shoulders and the scapula for overhead movement. Lift the elbows up about shoulder height, and then a little bit higher. Lift the back of the heart. It'll be more like an extended spine. And then exhale, rounding inward, puff up the back of the heart. So breathe into the space in between your shoulder blades. And let's free up the fibers of the back body. Really important before doing any arm balancing, especially with the arms overhead. Circle the elbows and the chin and the head could follow three times around each direction. This is a great prep for downward facing dog and Handstand anywhere where your arms are overhead. And we'll make our way back to center. Open wide again, open up to the chest. And as you exhale, other elbow underneath. Lift the back of the heart as you lift the elbows up. And exhale, rounding inward. A couple cycles of breath to breathe into your back body. Right, really tapping into softening the front of the body to the back body, especially for handstands. Circle around three times each direction. And lingering anywhere that needs extra breath and awareness. And after your last round, arms out wide, open up through the chest and release your hands. Super important to prep the wrist, so explore. A bunch of wrist prepping exercises, strengthening and stretching. So we'll start off with the elbows or the forearms parallel to the ground. So the elbows are bent about 90 degree angle. 
making a light fist and then curl your knuckles down to the ground and then lift up and then keep doing that and relax your shoulders and you can even rest your elbows close to your sides for support so you're not like wearing your shoulders like earrings good and then you can pick up the pace a couple of times so we're also prepping the muscles of our forearms like when we strengthen uh, grip strength and wrist and forearms this will help us from collapsing into our wrists for another three <laughs> waking up muscles you may have forgotten about, about two and one slowly release you can shake it out if you want and now we'll do some blinking hands so reach your arms straight ahead curl your fingers in towards the heel of your hand and then bring the thumb in front it's going to be like a reverse snap sort of so you kind of want to listen for a noise here you go flick flick <laughs> keep flicking you can think of it as a way of getting a gesture of getting rid of any bad juju <laughs> you can pick it up pick up the pace if you like yeah so you want to create some resistance between your thumb and your fingers for three two and one same thing arms to the side so about 10 times five four rather counts three two and one up ahead palms facing forward for ten nine eight seven so you're really flicking three it's not easy two and one we're gonna do one more round ten nine now you feel the muscles of your wrist five whoo, four three two one hopefully you're sending me good vibes <laughs> i feel the love three two one lift it up now you're happy that we're in a seated position five four three whoo, two and one oh that goes shake it out and those are some of your muscles of your wrist okay elbows close in again palms facing down this time like we did before open hand curl the fingers to the little puppy dog and then lift these are our chaturanga arms right here wrist extension wrist flexion oh yeah i might feel completely different than what we just did before for another four <laughs> nice three two work out for the wrist and one light fist and circle around <laughs> this is a workout for the wrist you can go around and you're like yeah i get those fists ready to punch you in the face <laughs> in a, a non-violent compassionate way good shake it out process what just happened press down to the tops of the feet and we'll be so happy to make our way onto our hands and knees block to the side blocks to the side and you can circle your ankles because we kind of forgot about our ankles and our feet with all that wrist strengthening twinkle your toes wiggle your toes then curl the toes under let's bring awareness to the spine before we get back to the wrist so rounding through the spine cat keep the spine rounded bring the hips back so also stretching out the soles of the feet we'll give the wrist a break three more times inhale forward neutral position exhale rounding and bringing the hips back own breath and rounding one more time and hello to the wrist again bring your shoulders over your wrist flip your fingertips out to the side and then towards towards your knees towards you may need to bring the knees closer to your fingertips now we'll circle the whole body so it's not just the hips that are circling not like this you're bringing the shoulders to the side and then back behind your wrist let the heels the hands lift up a little bit or a lot then circle the opposite direction shoulders over the wrist and we'll do that four times each direction four times handstand asks of us for pretty deep wrist extension so again really important to prep our wrist yeah, soften your eyeballs <laughs> oh yeah and your faces nice and then we'll meet with the fingertips facing forward for this one again you may need to bring the hands and knees closer to each other come on to the back of the hands now 
shoulders away from the ears. Thus, you can turn your elbow creases towards the front of the mat, towards, and make fists, light fists. Curl your fingertips in and then open. Open and close. For another four, three, two, and one. Slowly releasing onto your hands. And I'll walk it forward all the way onto your belly. Onto your belly. So we're gonna do some locust variations here. Locust variations. So bring your forehead to the ground. Knees pressing down. Reach your arms back behind you, palms facing up. And lengthen everything away from the ground. Make sure you're lengthening rather than just focusing on the lifting. So the legs will lift and the arms will lift, shoulders lift. And curl your fingertips towards the underside of your forearms in the most awkward way you can. And then straighten them. And as you pass through wrist extension, float your hands forward into a floating, hovering, cobra-like upper body. And then we'll flow with that. Bringing the elbows back, straighten the arms back, palms up, and curl the fingertips towards the underside of your forearms. Good. And again, wrist extension, bend the elbows, hovering low push-up arms. Do that two more times. Waking up the back body and the wrist. How many ways can we sneak in wrist love in every posture? Keeping a slight tucking of your chin in towards your chest and then slowly release. Make your way onto your hands and knees again. Hands and knees. <laughs> You're like, I'll stay here. <laughs> You're good on the ground. That's good. Okay, hands and knees. Wrist push up. So, first, knees below your hips. Turn best you can the eyes of your elbows forward. So, you're rotating your biceps more towards the front of the mat, the biceps more towards the front. All these different kind of cues. Okay, and then shoulders soften away from the ears. Then shift the weight forward enough that your shoulders are going more towards your fingertips, a little bit more forward. So at least want to make sure your shoulders are directly over your wrist. And then lifting up either both hands at the same time, the heels of your hands, and then lower down. And then the thumbs can lift up also. Yeah, we'll do about eight to 10. Try to keep your elbows squeezing towards straight and the elbow creases facing more towards the front of the back. Yeah, a wrist need strengthening as well. Whew. And after your last round, slowly releasing. <laughs> Walk your wrists slightly in front of your shoulders. Make sure your wrist creases are parallel to the front edge of the mat, finding your tiger or tigress paws. Okay, so you're gripping the mats with your finger pads. That will help us not collapse into our wrists. Turn the elbow creases, the eyes of the elbows, more towards the front. Curl your toes under. Make your way into down dog. Pedal it out. If that feels good to you. And then for this next exercise, you can keep the knees bent. You can lift the heels, keep the knees bent. Elbow creases more forward. You're going to do the same thing, lifting up onto your fingertips, heels of the hands, either alternating one and then the other, or explore both at the same time. As you do that, make sure that your inner shoulders are turning more towards the front of the mat and your outer shoulders are moving a little bit more away. Well, often I do, one at a time. <laughs> For another three, two, and one, lower down to your knees. Cool, we'll come to kneeling now. We'll be so happy to be kneeling again. Block if you need, again, block or two. We're gonna come into the same kneeling position. And you may need, you're gonna need another block. So you could also be sitting on your heels. So block nearby and strap. Shoulder flossing. Probably never been so happy to floss your shoulders after all that wrist prep. Shoulder flossing, hold on to the strap. Start off wider than your shoulders or a, a little bit wider than your shoulders or a little bit, little bit wider. Adjust however you need to. 
Make sure there's no break in the wrist. So try not to have the thumbs collapse in towards each other. Pull the strap taut and lift overhead. And squeeze the elbow straight, lower behind you. I'm gonna have to bring my hands a little bit wider. Oh yeah. Yeah, and keep, oh, especially after all that arm balancing on Sunday. So if your elbows start to bend or you have to make funny faces to get the strap back behind you, <laughs> myself included, funny faces and funny dancing, <laughs> slide the hands further away. Nice, and there's a tendency, there could be a tendency to stick the neck out, take the top of the throat back, like you're sliding the sides of the neck back, and the ribs popping, or not popping out, soften the base of the ribs down. Another three. Squeezing the arms towards straight, I'm watching myself too. And one, oh yeah, slowly release. Place the block on your lap. And we'll hold on to the strap, about shoulder width, so strap and block love. This will help us have some feel, feel back for extra rotation. You're gonna pick up the block in between your elbows. <laughs> Fine. And lift up. Lift the elbows, either shoulder height or slightly, actually slightly uh, below shoulder height to start off with. Pull the strap apart with your hands and press the elbows into the block and then begin to broaden through your collarbones. So you can be slightly lower than your shoulders. And most importantly, breathing, soften your eyeballs for another four. Extra rotation here, three. Hug that block in, two, and one. Now you're gonna bring it up about 90 degree towards. Same thing here. Breathing, squeeze the block, pull the strap apart for another four, three, two, and one. Break, just for a second, because we're gonna do one more round. Beauty and repetition, yeah. Totally feeling the love. Pull the strap taut, squeeze the block in, lift just below the shoulders. Hello, external rotation. Now we know what it feels like when we hear the cue. Imagine that you're squeezing a block in between your elbows. Now you know. For three, two, one, lift about shoulder height, pull apart. For another four, might be a little bit of shaking. Three, two, and one. Slowly release, try not to throw the block and the strap at my face. <laughs> we'll come onto hands and knees. Oh, do whatever you need to do to rinse cycles, circle the ankles. And then we'll meet in a supported plank pose. So supported plank can be, your variation can be tabletop. But you also have that same <laughs> feeling. You may still feel like the block is in between. <laughs> same concept here. Firming and wrapping the eyes of the elbows more forward. Or I'm gonna start at the back. Or walk your hands forward enough that your knees are slightly behind your hips. Yeah, towards. Yeah, or spin the biceps also. That also helps people sometimes. Good, and then engage your glutes slightly. Drop your tailbone. This is tricky for me. Best you can, you're having your pubic bone and your chest and your nose like in the same line. Stay here or walk your hands teeny bit more forward and allow the hips to go a little bit more forward. So you're about like straight line from the back of your skull and your pelvis. Stay here or walk your hands a little bit more forward. Usually I use a blanket slides here, but it's nice to have some Stay poses as well. Stay here or walk the hands a little bit more forward. <laughs> you might have to turn on the glutes a little bit more. Drop the tailbone. And then as mindfully as you can, walk it back and take child's pose. Nice. So a good way to tap into strengthening the front of the body to the back. Okay, hands and knees onto your back with a strap. Enjoy being on your backs while you can. <laughs> Try to be nice and give the upper, upper body a break. Have a strap nearby and notice how your attitude changes once you're on your back. We'll take the strap around the sole of the right foot, Supta Padagustasana. Has it's multifunctional for many postures, especially though for a handstand 
when approaching handstand from a split leg um, hopping up or swinging up. So take it around the sole of your right foot, straighten your left leg, squeeze the knees towards straight, shoulder blades down to the ground. Keeping the right leg straight, so engage the front of the right thigh. You can bend the elbows to the side as you bring the right foot closer in towards your face. And then curl up. So base of the ribs down, shoulders away from the ears. Lift your left leg to hover. And you might even hug your right leg closer in towards your face. For three, two, one. Keep the legs like that. Remove the strap. Either hands behind the head or reach your arms forward. For three, two, one, lower the right leg for a slow count of five, four, three, two, one. Pause here in your half boat for five, four, three, two, and one. Release. Yay. Feel the effects of your efforts and we'll carry it to the other side. Sole of the left foot. <laughs> It's good to take power in the pause. It's nice to take pausing in between the, the postures. You don't have to plow through them all at once. Gotta feel the effects of your efforts. Squeeze your legs towards straight. Strong mountain right leg. So don't forget about that right leg. And then bend the elbows to the side. Keep the legs straight as you hug your left leg closer in towards your face. And then soften the sides of the waist down, base of the ribs down. So the base of the ribs become very heavy to the ground as you curl the head, neck, and shoulders up. Maybe even sliding or pulling your left leg closer in and then lift your right leg to hover. Sides of the waist back here for three, two, one. Slowly release the strap, keep the legs as they are. Either hands behind your head or reaching the arms forward. And then slowly lower down the left leg to meet the right for five, four, three, two, and one for five, four, three, two, and one. Nice work, slowly release. You could flap, take up lots of space for a breath or two. Okay, bending your knees. You can hug them into your chest, back side to side. And however way you want to transition, Make your way onto your hands and knees. And then downward facing dog. Let's stretch that out for a breath or two. Okay, hands and knees. So we'll do a movement exploration that is a prep for stepping or hopping, however you wanna say, into handstand. So take your right knee towards your right wrist, and you may need to change the position of your knee, maybe directly behind your right wrist, maybe a little bit to the inside, but somewhere behind. Then the left leg is gonna be straight back, lift the back knee. And again, elbow creases more, or biceps more towards the front. What you're gonna do is you're gonna lift up. This is gonna be your uh, pushing leg, your right leg. You're gonna lift the right knee up as you lift the left leg up and shoulders float forward towards the fingertips. And then lower down. So it could be inhale to look forward. Exhale, looking towards the back of the mat, float the shoulders forward and lift the left leg. And do about three to five of those. Three to five. Keep the hips square. Yeah. To contain the energy. Mm -hmm. About three to five times. Yeah, really important to keep the hips square and hands down. Otherwise, you start to, the energy kind of like shoots out everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you don't, the good news is that you don't have to do many to feel those. Yeah, we'll meet hands and knees. Ooh, child's pose in between. <laughs> and hands and knees again. All fours. So shoulders over the wrist, turn your biceps to the front. There's many ways to do this, but this is one way. Left knee behind the left wrist, okay? And right leg, right knee lifts. Now as I lift my left knee, I float my shoulders a little bit more forward and lift the right leg. 
best you can, keep the hips square. And then lower the right foot back and left knee down. About three to five. This is pretty much the movement for one of the variations of kicking your way or hopping your way into handstand. And remember, we're building upper body strength along the way. So whether or not we kick up or get all the way up there, we're building the upper body strength, which is functional and has purpose, not only on the mat, but also off the mat for everyday living. I don't know about you, but I really like my yoga to serve my <laughs> off the mat life as well. Okay. So hands and knees, you can have a seat if you want. I'm gonna demonstrate L-shape at the wall, yay, or at the window or at the door. Okay. <laughs> Out the window. I, I have demonstrated, I have demonstrated somewhere where I used to teach that I almost went halfway out the window. And I always had I always had to be careful when we did inversions that nobody took that spot because like you just don't notice. You're like, okay, there's half a wall and a window. <laughs> it's a ground floor. It's okay. So a couple of ways to set this up. One way is to to guesstimate is sit the back your back up against the wall and feet extend out and placing one hand where your legs are extended guesstimate or you can sit facing the wall placing your hands i don't know just about by your hips and then taking your right hand where your left hand is and then turning around <laughs> fancy there might be some adjustments though now same thing here wrist creases parallel it depends sometimes people say fingers index fingers parallel to each other some people say middle fingers wrist creases we'll see what works best for you tiger paws elbow creases forward and like a downward dog with the balls of the feet on the wall. It's the heels on the wall here. Okay, so this is a good place to be. I'm gonna put prints all over your, <laughs> your sliding doors. So you're gonna place one foot hip height, press the wall away. First, I'm gonna do a little wardrobe adjustment. <laughs> and uh, yeah, wardrobe. We'll do like, this is a guesstimate, I think it was like right here. Okay, good, lifting the hips. One foot about the height of your hips and the other. And practice here. So I'm melting my heart towards the wall and I'm pressing the wall or the window away. That's one. Breathe. <laughs> okay, the next variation is to do the same thing, but you'll lift one leg up and then lower down. Okay, so lift up. Here, and one leg up. And if you like, bend the leg that's on the wall and hover. Okay. So free to explore yourself, find, find a place on the wall if you like. This will not be on the camera. This will. I don't know if it makes a difference. Yeah. Go by the wall. This is going to be more. The wall also feels more solid. There is a little bit of shakiness going on yeah. on, the, on the sliding door. <laughs> Please go wherever you feel secure. That's the most important thing. Well, let me know if you need help getting that up. <laughs> yes. I love the practice of acting, asking for help. Yes, I need help. Please support me, yes. It is not an easy thing for a lot of us just to be like, I need help. And I can help. Fine. Yeah, so you reach like one of your hands, like about guesstimate, or you could see where like where your foot was, like in the middle of this plank. It's fun to do plank on plank. What's hip height? So you can walk your feet down a little bit. I think L shape at the wall is harder than handstand for a lot of people. You're not going too high. You're not going too high. Yeah, give yourself a break in between. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, no forcing. So for this variation, you can walk your feet down, yep, and then press the ground away with your hands. Press the, yep, and then pull, energize the top of your thigh bones up to the sky. That's it. You're gonna feel like you're gonna go over, but you're not. Press, press the wall away. Good, and press the thigh bones up to the sky. Yeah, good. Yeah, you feel it? Nice. Yeah, press with the inner corners of your hands, so the L shape between your thumb and your first finger, press back down. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, a little high, but like doing great. And melt your heart back and look to the wall. Squeeze your triceps in. Nice. Nice, man. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Way to go, ladies. Yeah, take the child's pose. You do feel like you're going to at first feel like your hips are going to go over. But that's where you want to, yeah, to have your sh hips directly over your shoulders is, uh, it, that's the, that's, it's much tougher than handstand. Nice. Now that you've become familiar and you know that you can survive that, if you want to try another round, you could try lifting up the one leg and uh, hovering. But that's like, it just, it just takes like one good L, L at the wall to create serious heat. We can do this one. Am I an L? About 90? Okay. This? Hmm? And then you could try like three of these. Towards. What did you say about blocks? Oh, the glass. Yeah, yeah. It feels pretty. If I was starting off, I wouldn't be kicking up there or anything like that. No, no, no. I do not recommend doing this up against glass if you're a beginner. <laughs> Like we don't need you don't need any more of a excitement. <laughs> Handstand is exciting all on its own. Nice, yeah. And, and invite in this feeling of pressing your thigh bones up to the sky. Yeah, no, slowly, slowly. It's like it's like you have to make sure you're breathing. <laughs> yeah, teeny a bit lower. A teeny bit, and then squeeze the triceps, to squeeze the block in between your elbows. Yeah, thigh bones up, press the heels down, nice. And if you want. That's enough. <laughs> That's like more than enough. Every time I come into this one, I'm like, it's enough. Yay. Want to do another try? Okay, we'll take a rest too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be, it has to be agreeable. The shoulder needs to be agreeable before you put weight on. Okay, so the next one is towards, <laughs> let's take out those wrists. So we're definitely doing that stretch out where we're all done. <laughs> is to practice the same movement that we've been doing, um, but up against the wall towards stepping, hopping, swinging. I don't like to say swinging so much. I like to think of the top leg as reaching up towards the sky, but the similar shape that we've been practicing for, day, for today. Again, there's so many different, different ways to approach. So I'm gonna do the same thing. First, make sure you're about like five inches away from the wall so you don't bang your head into the wall. That will undo the fun of handstand. So right knee towards right wrist like we did before. Left leg extended out. And belly and ribs in. And I do this movement, but I can add a hop. And then down. And then down. And maybe the left heel will get there first. Hello, camera. <laughs> left leg will get there first, the heel, and then you lift the right leg up. We all kind of start off doing a little Irish jig. This. Like this, like we just practice. There are many ways to do it for. Try this way, try this way, it's a different way. Yeah, 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 it's different. So the ladies were just talking about going up probably I think from here and going like this and using momentum, which is great too, which is a great way to do it also. This is a different way, nice. Yay. And then once you're up, if you're up, again, a little bit of the pose is the pose. All the steps along the way are beneficial. 
once you're up, if you're up, then slide your heels up the wall. And then you can see if you can hug your inner thighs together and bring them away from the wall. Fun, see so you did. You said, I don't think I can. Nice, and practicing the practice of kicking up. It's a lot of, we didn't practice a lot on the feet, but it's a lot of ground force, um, ground reaction force of pressing the earth away between your hands and your feet. And we, did, we didn't do a lot of prep of like hopping up. Yeah, totally. Totally, there's ways that you hug that knee, you can hug that knee into the chest. There are the leg, the knee that's down, Knee lift up this knee that's bent here. When you straighten the leg, you could think of hugging the thigh bone up into your hip socket. There we have the active hip flexion that we all love so much. Is to think about hugging once you lift the leg and hop up. So like you do this, I'm hugging my right thigh bone into my hip socket towards the wall. So another nice cue is to lead this movement not from the top leg, but from the hips going to the wall. Because when we forget about our hips, that's where the banana back happens. So think of leading from the back of your waist and the back of your hips to the wall instead of trying to get that leg or heel to the wall. Think about leading from there. I would go away from the wall teeny bit, teeny bit slight your hips back. Yeah. <laughs> After, after during the break, we're gonna explore it with bolsters. But way to play. Nice, nice, nice. That hop, it's not something that we're familiar with in our everyday lives, so that also takes time. We'll play for like another 30 seconds. Think about leading with your, first before you hop, yeah, make sure your shoulders, like we practiced before, are going, like past, like past your wrist. And look towards the back foot. Look towards the back foot as the shoulders come forward. Yeah, nice. You see how that helps? Because before you were trying to get your feet to the wall and the shoulders were behind the... Yay, stay at the wall as long as you like. Or we'll go back to our places and I'll show you a nice Nice, relatively nice wrist and forearm release. Well deserved, yeah. I'm gonna love handstands because it creates heat in a short amount of time and also that excitement of playing on your hands. <laughs> ah, okay, now you can do this with blocks if you want. We'll do everyone's favorite pose. Well, maybe now it's your favorite pose, Malasana. You can start off standing. You can have blocks nearby as a chair. I'm just gonna move here so you get it. You're gonna take your hands behind your knees and have a seat. Now you can sit on blocks for this if you want. It's gonna feel kind of creepy <laughs> at first. Make sure your heels are on the ground or your butt's on a block. And then open and close your hands. Oh my God, this is like one of the weirdest feelings in the world, but it's a really nice forearm and wrist. Yeah, grab two blocks. Two blocks will be more stable, Marianne. So you could squash your squash your forearms. Yeah. And then you can slowly release off oh, and hold. Let that go. And nothing fancy for the transition. Hi, oh, hands and knees. Are you sque are they able to squeeze? Yeah. And if you if you, that one's not accessible to you, you could do this one where you lay your forearm parallel to the front of the mat and then use your left knee on your right forearm to massage it out like we did on Sunday. For those of you are watching the recording <laughs> like this. Oh yeah. Okay, let's meet on our bellies. And one of the best stretches for Open up to the shoulders, right arm to the side, to the right. Look to the left, left hand close to your chest, right side of your face and head to the ground. Begin to roll your hips to the right. Slide your left hand closer in towards your chest. Keep the chin slightly tucked and slide the back of the head back so it stays in line with the spine. Stay here or bend the left knee and place the left foot behind you. Looking towards opening up 
the half moon of your armpit, the bottom of your armpit to the top of your shoulder. A couple cycles of breath there. And slowly releasing. Left arm straight out from your left shoulder. You could play around with the angle. Turn your head to the right, right hand by your chest. You need to roll the hips to the left, slowly, slowly. Tucking the chin slightly, back of the skull in line with your spine, or you could bend the top knee, reach behind you. Make sure you're keeping the back of the neck nice and long. So chin slightly in towards your chest. Only taking a shape in which you can breathe and settle into yourself, right? Less is war. I'm slowly releasing. Let's meet center, overlapping one hand on top of the other. Rest your forehead to your hands here, or turn your head to the right and sweep your arms back behind you. This could be it's often a nicer release for the shoulders and the neck. Breathing your belly into the ground, into the back body with each inhale. And then maintaining that imprint of the inhale on the back body, even on the exhale. Now turn your head the other direction. A couple cycles of breath here, breathing again, breathing into your back body, filling up, and then keep that fullness of the back body, even on the exhale. And slowly releasing. And feel free to take any other shape you may need to round out your practice. It can be a hip opener or a supine twist. And stay on your belly for extra long extra more extra time to find pigeon right ankle over left thigh bone that's an option anywhere between eight to ten cycles of breath so if you're doing a pose that's asymmetrical about four to five cycles of breath each side it could be supine twist fair enough Think about it too much. Kind to of go for what your body's asking for. Eight to 10 cycles of breath. I will meet in a short but sweet resting pose. Shavasana, take up lots of space. On your Shavasana, in your resting pose, whatever shape that is for you, it does not have to be on your back. Reflecting for a breath or two, any insights you may have gained about yourself, about your practice. How you could apply these insights, the suggested intentions as well of new perspective, finding a new vantage point to scope out a certain situation, not only on your mat, but also off your mat. And then offer up any of those insights to the vast ocean of consciousness. Allowing yourself to be filled with peace and awareness. Give the weight of your body, your bones to the ground. As your body softens from the inside out, melts across the floor. Soften your sensing organs.
Slowly begin to deepen your breath. Bring your movement back to your fingers and toes. Gently turn your head side to side. You can stay as long as you need. If not, bring your legs closer together. Bending one knee and the other, draw your knees into your chest. With your hands or your arms, give yourself a big hug of gratitude for investing this time on your mat. And with awareness, roll on over to whatever side is calling for you. Has the last thing to come up. Comfortable seated position. Eyes could be closed or a soft gaze. Overlap your hands on top of your heart. Think of one thing in your life that you are grateful for, no matter how big or small. And we'll end together one cleansing breath first. Empty out all the air from your lungs. Inhale through your nose, fill up. And exhale, ha. As always, gratitude for practicing together. May it all be a benefit to us and everybody else around us. Namaste. Way to play. Yay, ladies. Oh, God.